three storms to track, including Hurricane Norma, on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for October 19th. So the strongest storm active right now is in the eastern Pacific, Hurricane Norma really getting to grips as it moves towards the northwest. We also have Tropical Storm Tammy and Tropical Storm Samba in the Atlantic and Western Pacific, putting our annual number count up to 69. It's day 141 in the Atlantic hurricane season and we have Tropical Storm Tammy which is uh, sauntering towards the Lesser Antilles, the 19th tropical storm of this season so far and still a little bit of, a of time to run yet before the we reach the end of the season. In the Eastern Pacific, day 157, we've got Hurricane Norma, which is really strengthening quite quickly, and a area of interest with now a 60% chance of development. It's been pretty steady at around that number for a good while, and it still looks like it could develop either sooner or later. In the Western Pacific, we've got Tropical Storm Sandbar, which is along the western tip of Hainan Island, and a 30% area of interest in the Far East there, near the Micronesian Marshall Islands, actually, is that Far East. In the North Indian Ocean, we're now up to 90% for a system that's going to develop by the looks of things fairly soon in the Arabian Sea, and a 50% chance now for the Bay of Bengal system, which could become a tropical cyclone, and the models aren't really sure on how to play that one just yet, but it does appear the Arabian Sea system will become a substantial cyclone and it will track towards the Arabian Peninsula. In the South Pacific we're up to 70% for this new system that we're watching very closely and it could become a significant impacting storm for Vanuatu and maybe even the Solomon Islands and beyond towards New Caledonia or Fiji. Well here's Norma right now, a category 1 with at least 85 mph per hour winds and that's probably outdated already because it is strengthening quite rapidly. It's 570 kilometers from Manzanillo, Mexico, 639 from Preta Vallata, 762 from Guadalajara, 811 from Cabo San Lucas and 857 from Mazatlan all along the coast of Mexico. No watches or warnings are in effect at this stage, but it is expected to get close to the southern tip of the Baja California Peninsula by the time we get towards the end of the weekend. And here is Tammy in the Atlantic. That means there's only two names left, by the way, in the normal naming list. Tropical Storm Watch for Barbados, Dominica, uh, Martinique and Guadeloupe, I think that was. And it is 764 kilometers from Barbados, 917 from St. Lucia, 918 from Martinique, 983 from Dominica and 1010 from Guadeloupe. On the map, you can just about see, well, the Barbados label on the left-hand side of the image, so it is starting to get closer to those places. Let's take a look at satellite imagery of all of these systems then. First of all, looking at Norma and its fantastic visual appearance as we look at those late visible images starting to get dark there now, but really beautiful on that imagery. And the infrared isn't too far behind either. The eye still quite uh, shallow at this point, at least from what we can see from the satellite, but the cloud tops around it looking really good, almost a red ring there on this enhancement, which shows that's minus 70 degree cloud tops almost wrapping the whole way round. If it keeps up like that, it's going to get much stronger. This is Tammy, it's struggling a little bit, but it's a decent amount of convection blowing up. It looks like it might be heavily sheared on the western side, or maybe it's something else going on there. It is struggling a little bit. 40 miles per hour, a decent read on this storm right now, and it is expected to gradually intensify. National Hurricane Center expect that it will reach 65 miles per hour before it reaches the Lesser Antilles and affect those islands near that intensity. Now here is Tropical Storm Sandba, still blowing up large amounts of convection, but its structure doesn't look that great to be honest, so I'd stick to around 40 mile per hour winds there and a pressure near 1000 millibars, but a big blow up of convection is no doubt going to be causing a lot of rainfall in the area. Uh, a lot of noise on this radar imagery, but if you look carefully you'll clearly see the rotation of the storm gradually moving northwards, just rounding the periphery of western Hainan. And a quick look there at that Arabian Sea invest, uh, starting to get itself sorted and a very quick look at the South Pacific, already starting to show signs of development. 
Sea surface temperatures look pretty good ahead of Norma. Uh, as long as it doesn't go too far towards the west, it looks good. Over 28 degrees Celsius as a general rule, and it'll probably be higher than that at, at some points as well. In the Atlantic, looking very good also for uh, our next storm there. I've forgotten its name on the spot right now. Tammy, goodness me. Uh, 30 degrees Celsius sea surface temperatures as it gets close to the Lesser Antilles, Leeward Islands, and very warm, of course, in the Caribbean Sea up towards 32 degrees. Degrees. In the Western Pacific, the Philippine Sea is very warm, over 30 degrees. The Gulf of Tonkin, around 28 to 29. It does get a bit cooler further north. And way out towards the east there, near that other area of interest, very warm temperatures in the lower latitudes and staying quite warm even higher up as well. North Indian Ocean, Bay of Bengal, very warm there across the whole sub-basin, over 30 degrees in quite a few spots. Arabian Sea, not quite as hot, but still looking very good generally, 28 degrees plus, all the way up to the coast of Oman. Southwest Indian Ocean, really starting to warm up in the Mozambique Channel. The rest of the ocean's got a little bit of catching up to do. Australian region, really warming up along the northern coast of Australia. Coral Sea, got some catching up to do there as well. Vanuatu, noticeably, most of those islands underneath the 26 degrees Celsius now uh, but where this potential system is right now it is much warmer near its uh, formation point uh, compared to average the western part of the arabian sea is well above average which might come uh, critical sooner or later on in the western pacific it's slightly above average eastern pacific where norma's going it is slightly above average to quite a bit above near the uh, south uh, the southern tip of the Baja California Peninsula. The Atlantic looking very much above average where uh, Tammy is right now, uh, up towards 3 degrees above, but it will cool down relative to average as it goes further north. Oceanic heat content is still very good in the Caribbean Sea and up through to the Bahamas and the rest of the Greater Antilles. It also creeps in towards the uh, Leeward Islands there as well. Uh, in the Eastern Pacific, a few good spots there as well in the path of Norma. Western Pacific, also very high values near the Philippines, but really not very much where Samba is. So let's check the GFS computer models then for the next five days. First of all, we're looking at Tami, and you can see its uh, progress there, moving gradually curving towards the northwest and just sparing those islands of tropical storm force winds. Very fine margins there, and a very small wind field on the side of the storm that's facing those islands. So I certainly wouldn't be sold by that. Uh, the trend has been further west as well, so it may well make landfall on some of those islands as it pushes through there over probably over the weekend looking at norma then you can see it moving up towards the north maybe a slight eastward element briefly there and then it passes just east of the baja california peninsula now and into the coast of mexico uh, earlier model runs had it stalling off the coast of the baja california peninsula tip southern tip there and the national hurricane center put that in their forecast as well i wonder if they might straighten that track out now as it calls for a landfall further north there and then well inland category one or two it could get stronger than that though uh, looking at the indian ocean you can clearly see samba on the right hand side as well in the western pacific dying off quite quickly by the time we get to the weekend later on in that weekend uh, and then you've got this big cyclone in the Arabian Sea, rather small in size but very big in intensity. First of all looking at Sandbar again, there it is just along the coast of China but it does die off quite quickly and then following this Arabian Sea cyclone really getting that intensity up through the 23rd, 24th of October, major hurricane equivalent. Now looking at the South Pacific towards this potential storm forming as well, it's rare enough that we have it in October to see a tropical cyclone in this area. It has happened before but not just that it gets quite intense as well getting towards category two maybe category three there within that five day period heading towards Vanuatu those northern islands of the island chain uh, doesn't reach it just in that five day period it's a little bit after that that the storm will arrive rainfall expectations there's a few that we could have shown for this because elevated rainfall in Mexico possibly high rainfall in the less uh, leeward islands and high rainfall in Oman but we think that this is the biggest concern for rain right now the one uh, for Sanba so very high rainfall amounts along the coast of southern China there west of the Lizu Peninsula up towards 24 inches of rain there that is 600 millimeters and at significant amounts extending inland as well for Vietnam there is still one or two spots that are going to get very enhanced 
and strainfall there as well, up towards 14 inches, 350 millimetres. And on Hainan Island, we could see a few spots there getting an additional 6 inches on top of what we've already seen, that's 150 millimetres. So certainly a significant flooding threat. In the longer range then, we're looking at day 5 to 10 here for this Atlantic hurricane. That is Tammy now, moving towards the northeast and uh, not fully sure about where its track is going to go. And eventually it does pull towards the north, doesn't get sucked into an extratropical cyclone anymore like it said on previous model runs, and survives a little bit longer as it pulls westward over more open waters, slowly towards Bermuda but doesn't quite get near. And then a hurricane there weakening a little bit and is still active by the end of day 10. Eastern Pacific looking out for a potential next system or this may indeed still be that invest that we're tracking that 60% that finally forms on the 26th properly into a tropical storm there and then it careers off towards the north really uncertain about its track and eventually could get close to the coast of Mexico so really unsure about what might happen with this uh, very poor confidence forecast there we've got to get Norma out of the way I think before we can comment more on this one look towards the western pacific and a uh, bit of a formality to show this one because it doesn't affect any land areas during that period but it does end up becoming a substantial storm and a typhoon that curves out towards the northeast becomes a category one two maybe three there as it moves northeastwards baroclinic forcing possibly um, and that is the current area of interest that we've got at 30 percent finally developing on the 26th that's quite a way out from where we're at now and the Indian Ocean looking at that landfall of that powerful cyclone not too far from Salalar just east of there moving inland over the desert of the Arabian Peninsula and dying off quite quickly. Look towards the Bay of Bengal still looking at that system the other one that's 60% uh, right now and it struggles it really does uh, to get towards tropical storm state it's very very broad. Another quick look at that cyclone there moving inland that's going to be the one to watch I think. Uh, because conditions look much better for that one to really get some intensity up. Now the South Pacific, once again powerful cyclone here, category 3, maybe bordering category 4 there as it moves through the main islands of Vanuatu, that could be a pretty devastating blow there and tropical storm force winds drifting along the southern islands of Fiji as it moves back towards the southeast. So there it is, pummeling those islands, possibly New Caledonia as well with tropical storm force winds, and rounding that corner towards Fiji, moving through Tonga as well, possibly with tropical storm force winds, and eventually moves down to New Zealand as an extratropical remnant. Scan the barcode and that will take you to the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual clothing items predominantly, as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request and are still waiting for Hone t-shirts, which despite everything else going on, there is absolutely no sign of that Hone. So in the Atlantic, now the new uh, run from the GFS, which is showing us something different to what it had been saying for quite a while, and it shows that Tammy goes on for a very long time. It's still active at the end of 16 days there, only just turning uh, into a remnant low by the looks of things there right at the end of that run so it may even last into November there as a tropical cyclone if this model run is to be believed but we're not sure yet uh, all that we can really be sure of is that it will recurve towards the northeast and then who knows what happens in an open Atlantic finally this other system here which could still be linked to that system that we're talking about that 60% east of Norma right now eventually shifts out towards the northwest and could also still be active by the end of day 16 as it uh, drifts back towards the southwest again after that and starts to weaken probably doesn't have very much longer on that forecast there after that day 16 but obviously very poor confidence in this one we'll have to wait and see well we covered a lot of ground there loads of storms to look at you can talk about all of this on our discord server discord.gg slash force 13 for tropical weather and general weather chat with members from all around the world including cyclone history which we're about to cover in the on this day section 
and it was a doozy, although no images to back it up, but we had a Category 5 bearing down on Western Cuba in 1924-99 years ago now. The Cuba Hurricane, it became known as of 1924, a very powerful landfall, 165 mile per hour peak, and then moved on into Western Florida, still as a Category 2 I think it was, or 3, and then out over the Atlantic. We also had Tropical Depression 11B, which would move north was straight towards the Ganges River Delta. Very impressive storm. Back to today then, and there's a few more impressive storms that could be on the way. In the Atlantic, the next name is Vince, that old chestnut. In the Eastern Pacific, the next name is Otis, and in the Central Pacific, it is still Hone. Code yellow for these storms right now. I think the main concern is still for Samba on Ticos, although Norma is catching up. The next name in the Western Pacific is Jellowat. In the North Indian Ocean, it's still Tej. And in the Southern Hemisphere, of course, you may well know that the next name in the South Pacific is Lola. If it's in the Australian region that it forms, it would be named Jasper. And in the Southwest Indian Ocean, the first name on their list is Alvaro. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again on Friday night.